Mm -hmm. All right. Pow, there it is. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and Cuomo. Vaping is better than smoking. <laughs> Technically, yes. But so what? Holy shit, what am I doing? I have no idea. I couldn't resist doing that. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello, you guys. Today is Thursday, which means that it's Mother Trucking Vlog Day. And yeah, I got a full on action packed vlog for you guys tonight. For anybody watching on the replay, all the time stamps to all your favorite segments, they're going to be down. They're going to be that first pinned comment right underneath this video. And you can just click the time. Just click the, the timestamp and you zoom, just write to it. There's no need to like fast forward or anything as we discovered in some favorite comments of the week not too long ago. But like I said, action freaking packed vlog for you guys tonight. I got uh, a beer. Yes, check. Shout out to Shane real quick from a dope purple Dixon that I'm going to try to wear for as long as I possibly can, at least until any sort of like rage, sweat, truth butter starts happening. I don't know. It's LA. It's like 90 degrees. There's fires everywhere. I'm wearing a flannel and I you know, just because it's new it's just because it's new and I want to wear it but uh, yeah we're going to talk about what I've been vaping we got a very random liquid tasting we got uh, a retro vaping for sure I have a getting to know grim green we got some mail as well and of course I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of news and advocacy one of the things look if I could be real honest with you guys one of the things that has been not bothering me but a little bit bothering me is Look, there's just been so much going on, you know? There's been so much news, so much advocacy, so much activism going on that the news and advocacy just takes up like 80% of the vlog, and, and, I'm, and I'm sick of it. We're still gonna have some news and advocacy, I'm still gonna throw some stuff at you, but I'm gonna try to condense it down as much as I possibly can so that we can just like have fun and fucking hang out in the vlog like the old school days like we used to and you know where our biggest worry was you know candy king remember those days anybody was anybody around for those days when the only thing we were all really worried about was like well candy king has really bad branding you know and there's those circus cookie e-liquid and that's that's our biggest worry right now i'm still going to have some news it's still critical to me we're just going to try to condense it down just a little bit so that it's not like 90% of the vlog. But welcome. Welcome, you guys. Uh, I guess actually the very first thing that I want to do, it's my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. So right now I would like to hear, I don't know why I always look this way. That's because that's where my monitor is, I guess. I would like to hear right now from Colin. What say you, fucking Colin? Off your favorite snake i want to see it send me your pet snakes if you have a pet snake put it on video send it over nick at grim um, hey grim also, just wanted to uh, say what's up from ohio and i have a pet snake but he's over there uh just fed him but wanted to show you this guy um just wanted to say appreciate everything you're doing uh shout out from ohio and keep on vaping It's just, just fucking Colin with a damn iguana on his head. I did ask for videos, you know, if you wanted to shout out your reptiles, like a snake or something like that. Is a snake a reptile? I don't know enough about reptiles to be sure about that. But uh, if anybody else out, first of all, hey, Colin, thank you very much. I really appreciate the kind words. Appreciate you, uh, appreciate you shouting out your iguana. Although we didn't catch the name. And if I'm being really honest, I don't even know exactly that that's an iguana. I just see a green reptile and I go, oh, that's probably an iguana because that's the one reptile that I know a name of. I know it's not a gecko. I know it's not a chameleon. Iguana. I get. I'm just guessing. Bearded dragon. That's another one, right? I'm not a reptile guy. But if anybody else out there has a video similar to Collins that you want to see featured in this year vlog, it's real easy. All you do is you take your phone and you record yourself and you say, "Hi, I'm going to do this and I'm going to shout out this and here's my gear and here's my favorite shop and this is my favorite liquid and I want to shout my wife out, my husband out, my fucking iguana." out. You can send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, that one thing. Chances are I'll see the attachment. I'll save it. We'll put it in the vlog and that's it. And we'll put it in the vlog. And what I wanted to do, we do the super chats at the end of every segment. Sorry, I should have I led with that 
a little bit. We do the super chats. If there's anybody new here, we just that's all. We just do the super chats at the end of every segment. Well, not at the end of every segment. I'm getting ahead of myself. Tell me, I need to breathe. Let's hydrate real quick. Good Lord. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easier to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. <laughs> you need that as a clip. <laughs> yeah, thanks Kent for uh Kent, thanks Kent for keeping me hydrated. But uh I guess what I want to do right now real quickly before we drink a beer, uh I had one favorite comment of the week and it's kind of uh you know, it's kind of an annoying favorite comment of the week. So let's read it real quick. Now there's somebody out there. There is a, there is a person out there that I am last week last week in the news and advocacy I, I posted some screenshots of someone actually pretending to be me for the sole purpose of sort of tarnishing my name. That was the only reason that this person would go onto a news site, pretend to be grim green and celebrate some sort of flavor ban. If you see anything out there with Grim Green that's that's speaking negatively of vaping, you just tell them to shut up. They are, are obviously an imposter. I believe this is the same person. I believe this is the same person who left a comment on my video. So they're obviously a subscriber of me. And like I said, I am... I, I'm like 99% sure. Is the mic a little hot? I'm sorry. I'm getting up into the red here and I don't want to be. I think I might have turned my mic up a little too hot. Is that a little bit better right there? I am 99% sure I know who this person is, but they left a comment on one of my posts on YouTube pretending to be Greg Connolly. Now look, I'll I'll give you a pass if you want to pretend to be me and just be out be out there and talk gibberish and, and be a non-contributing zero and just act like an idiot and go I'm Grim Green I love flavor bands that's fine don't pretend to be Greg fucking Conley because Greg Conley he he's the kind of guy that could go after you for like you know defamation and things like this. I feel like that's not a super smart move. This is the comment this person left. The entire industry has had more than five years to prepare for the PMTA process. Not a single company spent that time wisely. Instead, they were sold lies by the advocacy vultures who extorted millions of dollars that should have been spent on retail to help keep those small businesses strong. But nope, they shook everyone down. <laughs> All 20 advocacy groups, 20 advocacy group, all 20 of them. Yep. Yep. All 20 of them just hammering small businesses. And here we stand amongst the ruins with a dumb look on our faces. Suck. Yeah. All those 20 advocacy groups. Yeah. We had a big fundraiser for CASA, but you know, they've extorted millions of dollars. Fuck this guy. Fuck this person with a gluten-free dildo. Not even a gluten-free dildo. They don't even get that. Fuck them with an iron stick. They're just out there causing dissent, causing trouble. Like I said, I kind of think I know who it is. A lot of things add up for me. You know, had a few conversations and went, okay. Kind of adds up to who this is. Knock it off. Just, you've been, a, 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 you've been sticking in my craw for years and not just me, lots of people and lots of vendors and nobody likes you. <laughs> okay? Stop impersonating Greg Conley. That is super fucked up. Super fucked up. Ah, that just upsets me. Why bother trying to, why spend so much time trying to cause dissent in the vape world? Man, man, that's upsetting. So let's take a, let's take a second right now. Let's get into a delicit, delicit, delicious frosty beverage <laughs> yeah 
Yes, Cabra Loca. Today we're going to be tasting some uh, freaking Cabra Loca from Public House. This was a beer that we opened up last week in the vlog, sent to me over by Mr. Omslaw himself, Shane Cole. It is described as dark spice chocolate. This says espresso milk stout brewed with cayenne, cocoa, and cinnamon. Watch out. Flavor, <laughs> adult product with flavors in it. And the best thing about beer, I say this every week, no need for a disclaimer. Don't even have to put a disclaimer on there. In fact, real quick, let's see what the ABV is on here. Okay, it's seven. Seven, that's fine. Seven. No big deal. Seven percenter. Should be good. Should be good to go. I was trying to decide uh, which cup I was going to use tonight. I usually use my Grim Army one, but I think we're going with the good luck, uh, the good luck Jets mug. Because I don't watch sports and I'll root for whoever you want me to root for. And... When, since I married someone whose family is on the East Coast, I guess we root for the Jets. I know that we, wrote, we, we, we root against the Patriots. That's all I know is we don't like the Patriots. I'm not sure if we actually root for the Jets or not. But I'm going to be pouring this. Oh, old school, right over my keyboard. It's pouring dark. Look at this. Let's, let's not pour it over my keyboard. Let's pour it like this so we can all enjoy it together. Mmm. Look at that. It's like space without the stars. Got a nice thick head on there that I'm going to have to drink through like a man. Cabra loca. I know uh, actually less than zero about this particular beverage. Cabra loca. Let's look it up. Oh, Cabra Loca is actually a thing. It's a uh, espresso milk stout. Let's see. Uh, there's no uh, beer advocate over here. Uh, okay, I don't want to look at that just yet. Let's let's have a drink all together, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you got something f frosty, cold. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you have like tea right now or hot chocolate or something like that. Cheers. Here's to you guys. Yeah, 100%. That is, uh, oh, there's like a, it's spicy, dude. It's like a spicy, it's like, a, it reminds me of like a Mexican hot chocolate, like a spicy chocolate espresso. It's very stouty, very thick, very syrupy in the mouth. See, this would pair a malzing with Yig, but I have no Yig set up at all right now. Um, cayenne is really coming through. I'm really getting some spice. I'm really getting some like chocolate, espresso, sort of rich, heavy, stouty, cabra loco, cabra loco. Really, I mean, this is really delicious, Shane. Really delicious. Hidden spices. Mm, it's like hidden, sp hidden spices, Scott Jenkins. Hidden. There's a little bit of actually like tart. It's like there's a little bit of tart, tartness happening on it. Uh, this is Psycho Crawler. Sure, why not? I feel like that's going to be the closest that I can uh, possibly pair with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Not bad, not terrible. Wish I had some yig. Wish I had some sort of tobacco setup. This is one of the first times in recent memory that I can remember. I don't. I don't even have a a GD uh, tobacco setup right now. But that's okay. I'm gonna sit here. Thank you, Shane. I'm gonna enjoy this cabra loca. Dang, dang and a half. That's actually really, really good. Well, now that we got through some beer, do you wanna? I don't know. We always do the same order, don't we? We always just do the same order. Let's just let's just jump into it. Uh, before we get to any mail or retro vapes or random liquid tastings, uh, let's just jump into it. I, I got a little bit of news for you. I wanted to talk a little bit about the rally, and I also got, I'm going to try to cram in as much news as I possibly can in like the next 15 minutes. Here we go. News and advocacy, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot I left that. <laughs> Ah, that's fine. I forgot I left that old bumper on there. That's fine. So, um, so what? 
So there is still an active call to action for the CASA Protect Vape Mail. This is rejecting S1253. Still an active call to action for this. I'll be putting a link down in the description. If anybody circulating links in the chat wants to include this call to action still, there's still a call to action happening right there. I promise I'm going to get to those super chats right after this news. I promise I will. Uh, One more thing I wanted to throw out there. Real quickly, again, just because it's still going on and it's in danger of not having enough participants, the Veritas cohort study is happening. I just heard from one of the reps, uh, United States reps, as it were, of the uh, Veritas cohort study. This is open to anybody that is currently a daily vapor and you have a limited history of smoking. If you fit this criteria then fit this criteria. I'll have a link in the description where you can get in touch with the people to be part of this really, really great study. This is for if you've smoked less than 1,000 cigarettes total. 1,000 cigarettes total, which I know is not a lot of cigarettes. That's just not a lot of cigarettes. But if you meet the criteria, I really feel like you should be a part of this. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty spectacular. One more thing I wanted to throw out there is uh, this is not going to interest really anybody, so I'm just going to make it real quick. Uh, The GTNF is happening really very soon. This is the Global Tobacco Nicotine Forum. This has been going on for years and years. It's starting September 21st, and really the only reason I'm bringing this up is because our very own Australian advocate, Colin Mendelson, He's going to be speaking at this. I'm going to register. I'm going to watch as many of these speeches and seminars as I possibly can. I'll bring you some of this news back. But what the uh, GTFN is, here, let me show you this. Let me show you this. About GTFN, uh, shaping the future together, the Global Tobacco and Nicotine Forum is the world's leading annual forum discussing the future of the tobacco and nicotine industries. It was founded on the principles that through the dynamic dialogue and expanding perspectives the forum promotes, we can genuinely shape the future together. Like I said, not a lot of people are going to be interested in that. I get nerdy with uh, advocacy stuff, so I, I'm excited about this. I'm excited to hear what Colin Mendelson has to say. Uh, I know that Dr. Moira Gilchrist is going to be there as well. She's someone I follow on Twitter. She does work for Big Tobacco. She's a PMI person, but she's very like harm reduction uh, focused. Uh, it's just interesting. I like getting you know information from a lot of uh, you know from a lot of different sides. So if anybody's interested in that, I'll have a link down in the description as well. Some good news. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Some good news out of Florida. Governor Ron DeSantis vetoed the bill. Uh, he vetoed the flavor ban. This headline is incredibly, terribly misleading. Incredibly, terribly misleading. Governor DeSantis vetoes a bill that would have raised the age for smoking and vaping, even though it wouldn't have done that because we already have nationwide tobacco 21. The article says that uh, Governor Ron DeSantos vetoed the bill that would have raised the age limit on tobacco products from 18 to 21 in hopes of preventing teen vaping. That's not, as far as as far as I know, to my knowledge, that's not what this bill would have done uh, at all. I think this was just a flavor ban. Um, Governor DeSantis said the bill would almost assuredly lead more people to resume smoking cigarettes and it would drive others to the hazardous black market. So huge shout out, thank you to uh, all of the advocates in Florida that worked on this behind the scenes, the VTA, the Florida Smoke Free Association, and Governor Ron DeSantis for kind of being freaking reasonable, being like a reasonable person uh, in a just a chaotic world, it's vetoed. So good news, good news in Florida. Has the chat stopped just for me? <laughs> or has the chat stopped for everybody? Hang on. Where'd the, where'd the chat go? Wow, the chat just completely died on my side. Hang on. This is unacceptable, Dangle Clacks. These are unacceptable Dangle Clacks. Okay, now we got now we got the chat going again. So yeah, uh, really well done. Really well done, everybody out there in Florida. And look, I'll take this win. I'll take it. Right now... I'll take any win that I can possibly get. If we could get this vape mail ban overturned and rejected, I'll take it. I would love that. I would love the crap out of that. Uh, 
Got a little bit of news that we shared in the uh, Tuesday Bro Tuesday, but you don't know nicotine. A dude, it's got a premiere date, Saturday, September 26, 2020. This is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I would still, I don't know, I, I want to go to this. I don't know that I'll be able to go to this. I know that Aaron is planning premieres in, in lots of different cities. And I believe he's planning one. You know, I don't want to give out too much information. I'm pretty sure he's planning one for Los Angeles that I will definitely, definitely be at. But the first world premiere of You Don't Know Nicotine is going to be Saturday, September 26th. Drive-in experience, uh, uh, North St. Jackson Street. North Jackson Street, not St. Jackson. Who's St. Jackson? There was no St. Jackson as far as I know. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So if you're in the area, I would highly, 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 highly recommend going to this premiere. This movie is going to be amazing. This movie is going to be incredible. Incredible. So there was also some, uh, there was also some, I'm just going to touch on this really quickly. Is this going to work? Is this going to work if I click this? Of course it's not going to work. Uh, this. Okay. Nope. Hang on. There's just a few dangle clocks happening. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Nope. That's not it. That's my desktop. <laughs> That's fine. This is the one. That's the one that I'm searching for right here. There was some... Uh, the 2020 National Youth Tobacco Survey. They've released some of the data points from the 2020 National Youth Tobacco Survey and vaping, teen and youth vaping, guess what? Down. It's down. Keeping in mind that all of this survey data was done before Tobacco 21, was done before the California flavor ban, was done before the, you know, uh, Massachusetts, New York, Ohio, Washington State flavor bans, before all of that, youth vaping down. Mr. Uh, Charles A. Gardner, PhD, over there on Twitter, kind of did a little rundown here that just says, uh, new data on U.S. high school vaping 2019, 27.5% were current vapors, 5.8% were daily vapors in 2020. That dropped to 19.6, and that current means ever use. So they count, again, in this survey, they count if you tried it once. If you just did it once, then that's it. You're a, you're a current vapor. You're, you're a current vapor. Daily use is like habitual use, like you're using it daily. 5.8 to 4.4%. One year decline. Current vaping, 29%. Daily vaping down 24%. He also notes that current use equals once in the last 30 days. And does and this survey, for some reason, we talked about this on a Tuesday Bro Tuesday, does not distinguish between nicotine or THC vaping for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why they did that. It doesn't make any sense why they would do that. So there you go. As more National Youth Tobacco Survey data sort of comes out, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to report it as best I can, you know. Um, but right now, it's just very like preliminary numbers and whatnot coming out. They haven't even talked about smoking, which I'm guessing, I'm guessing that smoking is down. Again, because if it wasn't, if smoking was up somehow in high school kids, I'm sure they would have left with that. I'm sure they would have led with that. Like, well, smoking's up. You know, prove the gateway effect, which then they'll never be able to do. Prove the gateway effect. Uh, a few more things that I wanted to throw out there. There's a great article on Forbes. I'm going to spend no time on this. Banning flavored jewel pods is actually dangerous. Study shows how lawmakers bungled the vaping lung crisis Response, fantastic article. Like I said, I'm going to spend no time on that. It's exactly what you think it says, but it's a great little tool to have to, to use when you're talking to people on Twitter. Had the, uh, had the great pleasure of having Mr. Jim McDonald, who writes for Vaping 360 on last week's Tuesday Bro Tuesday. If you haven't watched it yet, I would highly recommend it, but I'm going to link down in the description to his newest article for Vaping 360, 
How will the PMTA deadline affect vapors and the industry? It's long. I mean, it's a novel. It's like a billion words long, but luckily there's some little links right here. So you can uh, click on how will vape shop survive? You want to see that? Boom. Takes you right there. So it's a good article. I'm going to post a link down in the description. We talked all about this on Tuesday, all about this on Tuesday. Reason Foundation also did a nice little article here, how the FDA is saving the cigarette. Yeah. Shocking. Sh shocking. Yep, but the FDA, they are. They're saving the cigarette. Traditional cigarette will receive the greatest boost it has gotten in many years thanks to federal law and a federal agency that is supposed to be focused on the protection of public health. That was written by uh, Guy Bentley, who we're going to be hearing from in, in just a second. Just one second, because I do want to talk about the rally. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be almost time uh, to pop this flannel off. It's, it's almost time to pop the flannel off. I'm already getting too too warm. I haven't even talked about what I've been vaping yet. We'll get there in one second. Getting a little bit too warm up in here with this Dixon on. As cool as I look, and look, I know that it, I know how cool I look. Ugh, it's just too warm. Burp life. Ugh, it's just gross. Ugh, one more time. So I ran across this website. I believe someone on Reddit is curating this particular website. Um, but you can go to vapepmta.com and it shows you uh, all of the vendors basically in the vape industry that have submitted are not submitting or are accepted their PMTAs here. If we cl click on the homepage here, is it legal? You can sign up for email addresses. Sure. So it shows you smoke is submitted, avail, Vaporesso has been accepted. Jewel has intent to submit vape wild, not submitting views has submitted. It'll show you uh, essentially all the vendors. I don't know if this is going to be, you know, fed from the big golden list that the FDA is doing, but I thought this was just some pretty interesting information. Um, Air Factory has submitted, Halo has submitted, Prism has accepted. And you can click and see more, more details and it'll tell you, you know, Prism, uh, three of our 19 flavors have already been submitted and accepted to the PMTA review process with the rest of our flavors to be submitted by September 9th, 2020 deadline. This means our brand will be allowed to be remain on the market and your shelves after September. So this isn't, you know, this is kind of a consumer thing, but it, it, it can be more of like a tool for shops as far as seeing who has submitted, who hasn't. This is one that I'm happy about. Smacks has submitted. And there's one on here that I'm really bummed about. Let's see, all of these are intent to submit, intent to submit. Let's go to uh, not submitting. VGOD. VGOD is not submit. I, I'm shocked by this information. I, I, I'm shocked by this information that VGOD is not submitting anything to the PMTA. That really, uh, I don't know why that rubs me the wrong way. I it was just such a huge VGOD supporter. And, you know, I, I know, you know, VGOD, VGOD Johnny and Danny Lolo and Shaq and everybody at VGOD. And I was surprised with how big of a company they were. Nothing. Yeah, Ruthless has submitted. I'll post a link down in the description there, Karen Ann Powell, if you're very interested, but you can go to vapepmta.com. And, uh, you know, this is something for shops to use, I guess, as a resource, consumers maybe to use as a resource. And look, there's gonna be liquids. One of the liquids I'm tasting tonight, no PMTA, not submitting a PMTA. Welcome to the black and gray market, you guys. Welcome to the black and gray market. Cheers. Again, we talked about the black and gray market on uh, Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, and it was, that was one of my, that was a really great episode, I believe, of, uh, of Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, but that's, uh, that's not quite going to wrap it up for the, for the news and advocacy because I did want to talk about the rally just very briefly. I'm going to take my shirt off and we're going to talk about the rally and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you the Guy Bentley uh, speech that he gave at the rally, I thought it was just fantastic. It's the only speech that I that I filmed because I couldn't stand there like Logan Exhale streaming all day, holding my holding my little phone up like this to my face. It was just it was just impossible. But I got I got I got Guy Bentley. 
I love Guy Bentley, Reason Foundation, Reason Magazine, Guy Bentley. And uh, I thought he gave a really great speech. This is about six minutes long, just about six minutes long. So we're going to, uh, we're going to listen to Guy Bentley. I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts on the, uh, thoughts on the rally. What say you Guy Bentley? Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure and an honor to be speaking in front of you today. And thank you so much to all of you for coming out and braving, uh, the DC swampland sun. And I can say it's a particular pleasure to be speaking at a protest and a rally in this town that is not asking for a subsidy, that is not asking for a bailout, that is not asking for protectionism, but simply for the right to compete on a level playing field in a free market with those companies that have billions of dollars and the best lobbying operations in this town. What all of you are asking here today is for the FDA to ease an impossible regulatory process, a regulatory process set in motion by the Tobacco Control Act. Mitch Zeller, the director of the FDA's Center for Tobacco Products, called the TCA historic and said, I quote, the role and, and demonstrates the role and power of regulation. Uh, I totally agree with Mitch. It shows the power of regulation not to protect consumers, but to destroy small businesses and limit choice. And because of this regulatory nightmare, 14,000 small businesses or more could shut their doors in the middle of a recession with more than 100,000 jobs lost and 99% of vapor products possibly disappearing from the market. And that's disappearing from the legal market. Because of course, as with all prohibitions, there will be an illicit market for these products. And we will see many vapors return back to smoking with choices denied to them. And we've already seen this this year with the onslaught of misinformation, the partial ban at the federal level and bans in individual states. We've seen from Altria's Ages Earnings report that older people who had switched from cigarettes to vaping are now switching back to cigarettes. The PMTA process is ostensibly intended to protect public health, to ensure that new products approved are appropriate for the protection of public health. This act was meticulously designed by what we are told are wise public spirited experts well, this law and these regulations resulted in a system where it is easier in the United States for a new cigarette to come onto the market than for an e-cigarette to come on the market. Some wise regulation that was. But the devastation to the vaping industry is not just an unintended consequence. We often talk about unintended consequences of regulation. This was the entire purpose of the Tobacco Control Act and the regulations e-cigarette products are being forced to go to. The process is designed to keep out new entrants to the market, and we shouldn't be surprised by that. Who were the biggest boosters of the Tobacco Control Act? Campaign for tobacco-free kids, of course, and they found a great ally in Philip Morris. It's not for nothing that the TCA was nicknamed the Marlboro Monopoly Act, with Philip Morris trying to cement its position as the leading provider of tobacco products in this country. And they got a double whammy. They didn't know that the e-cigarette revolution would be, would be as wide as, and successful as it is. And now they have a regulation which can keep out smaller competitors and consumers. Now, nobody here wants to ban any other co competitor of a, of a safer, reduced risk product, be it from a tobacco company or otherwise. All people are demanding here is a regulatory process that doesn't bankrupt you for having the temerity to compete. Contrary to the claims of the advocates of PMTA process, this will do nothing to protect youth from tobacco products. As the data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows, it is not the availability of flavors, product design, or even advertising why youth experiment with vaping products. It is curiosity and peer pressure, a story as old as the hills and applies as much to alcohol and marijuana as everything else. Now let's not forget where e-cigarettes came from. They were not invented thanks to a government research and development grant or even from Big Tobacco. It was because of a Chinese pharmacist called Hon Lek, who almost 20 years ago invented a way for him to stop, for himself to stop smoking. And what he did sparked an innovation revolution that created tens of thousands of businesses across the world, improved products, and millions of ex-smokers. But now, thanks to this bureaucratic process, compromised by industry and ideologues, the US is about to hobble one of the greatest public health advances in the last 100 years. And now, as of yet, as you know, 
The only electronic product, reduced risk product so far approved by the FDA is the Icos tobacco heating system brought to you by Philip Morris. Surprise, surprise. In the years up to now, we've had to put up with waves of misinformation. During the height of the Ebola epidemic, the then head of the World Health Organization, Margaret Chan, as this was going on, said tackling vaping should be one of the World Health Organization's main aims. We heard that vaping would renormalize smoking. It didn't happen. We heard that vaping was going to be a gateway to youth smoking. We've just seen the latest figures. Youth smoking has never been lower in the history of this country. And now you can set your watch by these false claims. Now we hear that vaping is more likely to give you COVID. Um, as this study was debunked literally within an hour of its publication and yet is being cited as fact by the New York Times as recently as yesterday. What you're protesting here is not just against a minutiae of government regulation. This is about demanding that people who choose a safer alternative to cigarettes will not be the latest in the long line of victims of America's longest war, the war on drugs. Because this is no doubt a crusade to put nicotine as exactly part of that war on drugs. Last year in Congress, Matt Myers, the head of Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids, said he was opposed to the legalization of marijuana. And he said most people in tobacco control were as well. So anybody else who thinks they don't have an interest in this fight, and we think we've made progress in tackling the war on drugs when it comes to marijuana, the exact same groups who are trying to crush this industry today will be trying to crush the legal marijuana industry just as soon as they are able to through the exact process that we are protesting here today. Now I've seen, as many of you have, the consequences of switching from smoking to vaping in my own family. My mother switched from smoking to vaping several years ago and now she just passed her 70th birthday. The FDA must reverse its course of action, which is laser targeted to destroy the independent part of this industry, thousands of small business and unemploy tens of thousands of Americans. This industry is not asking for special, special privileges, just the ability to comply with the rules and compete. And this fight is not over, it will not be over, so long as you make your voices heard, fight for free competition and free enterprise. Thank you so much and good luck. I mean, absolutely. Guy Bentley, that was, I feel like that was a really great, really poignant. I love the way he started that when he says, oh, it's nice to be, you know, with an industry that doesn't want any special favors and isn't asking for any sort of handouts. He's absolutely right. All we want is a level playing field. We know that these regulations cater to the biggest of the big, rich, big tobacco companies. They're the only people that are going to be able to get through this. No, I mean, okay, look, not the only people that are going to be able to get through this, but the they'll, they'll have the simplest, easiest time getting through this. And real quick, real quick side note, Joey in the chat, Joey Car Caricio, uh, he said, vaping helped me off of heroin. The bigot, the hobbyist side kept my hands busy so the boredom didn't win. That is fantastic. I've heard that so many times. That is a part of the vape industry and the vape community that that we that rarely, rarely gets talked about. But Joey, that, that's fantastic. Congratulations. And I appreciate you being here tonight. So the rally, how did the rally go? Let's keep this tight. How did the rally go? I thought the rally, all things considered, went really, really well. I was uh, truly and honestly surprised to see that many people there. Um, there are uh, other people on the internet and YouTube, just trying to be as vague as possible, that were kind of uh, bemoaning the, the, the attendance and calling, uh, calling us, uh, you know, uh, slackers, you know, and that we don't have any passion. And look, all things considered, that, that we're still dealing with this pandemic in the United States, that people are constantly being furloughed and laid off and getting, you know, their, their pay cut and they have families. Not everybody has the luxury to just, oh, I'll just, sure, take some time off, jump on a plane, fly to Washington, D.C. for one day to attend a rally. It's not for a lack of passion that people weren't able to show up 
It's because of literally everything else going on, not to mention in the news, they were talking about, oh, there's these protests happening in Washington, D.C., and, and, and rioters are, are burning down buildings, and, you know, it was a scary thing. I thought there were going to be, I don't know, 50, 60 people there. Turned out to be a few hundred. I would say max, maybe 250, maybe if I wanted to lie about it, maybe closer to 300, but it was probably closer to 250 people of passionate, dedicated vapors that gave a shit. And I know that it wasn't just lack of passion that was keeping people there, you know. It was it was everything else because at home, people were sharing stuff all over the place. Logan Exhale's live stream got shared like thousand times. It's got thousands of views and tweets were getting tweeted and shared all over the place. The people at home who couldn't be at the rally basically shut down the White House phone lines from so many calls happening. I was proud to be there. I was proud to be a part of it. I was, all the speakers were spectacular. Uh, everybody I thought did a really good job. Dimitri, I thought had a very, very good speech. Guy Bentley did really well. Uh, you know, uh, what's the guy uh, from uh, the thing with the thing in the American tax uh, for Paul Blair? I thought Paul Blair did a really good job as well. I thought all the speakers did really well. And it got some news coverage, but really this was more, it was less about the number of people there and more about the message of the people there. And I think all things considered, I was stoked on it. I, I was glad to be there. I don't know if we made a huge difference, but at least we were there. You know, if, if you do something, sure, you still might lose, but if you do nothing, yeah, then you will lose, you know, then you will lose. I was, like I said, with running the risk of repeating myself, I was happy to be there. I was stoked to be there. I was stoked to see so many people there. There was a, there was a, there was a great, uh, it was a great feeling. You know, it was hot. It was swampy. It was muggy. It was terrible. What did I have some disappointments in it? Sure. There were some disappointments there. I would have liked to have seen more people there. Obviously I would have liked to have seen people that have, you know, uh, profited a lot of money off of the vape industry uh, to be there. Maybe some other vendors to be there. Maybe some, you know, I'm not going to throw, <laughs> I'm not going to cause drama and throw names out there, but there's some people that I would have liked to have been there uh, that just weren't, you know. On the same side of the same coin, there's some people who were not at the first rally that I wish were at the first rally. It goes both ways, you know. We do everything we can. You don't have to do something. I mean, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. I thought the rally, I would say stamp, successful rally. Could it have been better? Of course it could have been better. The first rally could have been better too. We could have had double the amount of people for the first rally and there wasn't even a, a pandemic going on. All things considered, yeah, 200 attendees during a pandemic and civil unrest, that's not terrible. Green-eyed lady was at home making calls to the White House. Absolutely. I, I, be proud. Be proud of what we did in Washington both times. Be proud of all the phone calls we made. Be proud of all the changes that, that have happened. We did that. Vapors in Florida, you guys did that. We, we can initiate change. And I get it that like so many people are just... It's a lot to ask and people just get burnt the fuck out. I do too. I do I do constantly, constantly get burnt out, constantly get burnt out. And it's a lot to ask the consumer to, to, to suddenly become this like political activist and well, I know you just started vaping, but now you have to buy a plane ticket to Washington, D.C. so we can chant, we vape, we vote at the White House to reform the PMTA process, okay? You cool with that? People are just kind of saying, uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I'll try, right? Like, it's a big ask. It's a big ask to defend, you know, for the consumers to defend this. Again, all things considered, I think we kicked ass. I'm proud of us. I'm proud of the community. Let's get to some uh let's get to some GD super chats and like I
Guess we're ju- I guess we're just going backwards today. We're just doing everything out of order. Pat, that's very gracious of you. The price of a pack of cigarettes in Maryland. Uh, thank you for keeping me off them. Oh, seven bucks. That's the price of a pack of cigarettes in Maryland. That's crazy. That is crazy. Not Dash. Uh, what up, Nick? Here's to hoping we talk about Guar for the third week in a row. Oh, we'll get to Guar in just one second, my man. <laughs> Tenacious stands here. For the awesome sticker on your mic stand. Oh, uh, and I'm still working, so I won't be chatting much. uh, But happy to catch the... Yes, be pernacious. Be tenacious, Stanley. Appreciate you, Stanley. Trey, could Joe Rogan be on the vlog? Technically, yes. Vape on Nick. Dude, well, he technically, yes, he could be on the vlog. Would Joe Rogan ever be on the vlog? I'm going to go ahead and say no. All right, thank you, Michelle Lynn. Appreciate the reminder. Uh, Southern Comfort. I want to shout out Ron DeSantis, Republican, for the big veto of the Florida flavor ban. And shout out to Doug at Stellar Vapor in Lutz, Florida, who can return to work indefinitely at his vape shops because we voted for DeSantis. Yes. Yes. DeSantis. 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 I think it's great. I think, I mean, that's, yes, huge shout out. Huge shout out to Governor DeSantis in Florida. Just vetoed a flavor bill. Same, you know, uh, the, the, the governator, Arnold's did the same thing in California in 2010. Vetoed it. New Wave Dave, yo yo to all and some good vibes. Hope all is well. Much love to everyone. Hope life is good to all. New Wave Dave, I love you. I hope your house, uh, I, I hope you get all that sorted out. New Wave Dave, his house, uh, his house got a little bit destroyed. I got a video from him. I wasn't comfortable sharing it. We might share it next week, but uh much love to you, New Wave Dave. The Dark Smoke. Well, fuck that guy. Yeah, yes, yes, 100%. The imposter. I know who you are, and it's fucking childish what you're doing. You're just crying in your cereal. Just mm, crying in your cereal. The vape industry is so bad to me. Crying in your fucking cereal. Southern Comfort. Uh, shout out to Fat K- and shout out to the big FAQ to Ashley Moody who backed SB 810 toilet paper bill that's not in the that is now in the round file the trash can I can read you know I went to school don't tell me I can't read <laughs> yeah uh fuck Ashley Moody uh yeah just she's the worst I had a I had a video clip of her all queued up and ready to go I don't even want to show it because I don't want to look at her stupid face not the real Gerard Butler shout out to Paul Fortune to make his year Paul Fortune Paul Fortune do, 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 do. there's a shout out from me and not the real Gerard Butler Kevin yum yo yo for real uh get rid of that Jets mug Pats 100 percent thank you I, look Kevin I'm glad that you like the Patriots I cannot I cannot root for the Patriots. As long as I'm married to my wife, I cannot root for the Patriots. I will be in the doghouse if I vote for the root for the Patriots. Living hints, as the vape team is having holidays observed this Labor Day, passed for Canada and U.S., my support is here. Uh, A few months, hashtag a few moments later. Remember that? A few moments later. No, I don't remember that. Are you talking about SpongeBob? Uh, Michelle Lynn, very gracious of you. First time caller, long time listener. You're <laughs> happy birthday, Michelle Lynn. You know, it's Michelle Lynn's birthday today. You guys happy birthday, Michelle Lynn. <laughs> Actually, it is one of my patrons birthdays. We're going to sing happy birthday to Brett in just a second. Milo. It was awesome. Finally getting to meet you. Thank for all you do. Much love for me, my family as well. Lean back vapes in Plains, Pennsylvania. You're I think you mean pencil, Vapia. So what? Okay, maybe not. Kevin Chocolate, very gracious of you. For old time's sake, yeah, vape capital. You want to see a vape capital, Kevin Chocolate? I'll vape capital your, your fucking head off. Yeah, I just won that cloud comp, Kevin Chocolate. Brett, very gracious of you. Hello, everyone. I'm at work, but I'll be popping in throughout the vlog. Today is a very special vlog day for me since it's my birthday vlog day. Grim and everyone else keep on vaping. Yes, effing Brett. 
Boosh, Brett. I have a note right here that says sing happy birthday to Brett. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to sing sing with my beer. Happy birthday to Brett. Cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday to Brett. Happy birthday, dear Brett. Happy birthday to you. Cheers. Happy birthday, Brett. Happy birthday vlog day. I know you said you're at work, but I, ho- I really hope you caught that one little spot right there. Ohm's Law, still funding for a yak version of Wind Beneath My Wings. <laughs> I'll see if we can get him to do that. Uh, Johnny Cooled Cuts, thanks for taking a picture with me. It was great to meet you at the Rally Grim. Keep on vaping. Hell yeah, Johnny. Thank you for taking the time to be at the rally. Uh, I-, I appreciate you being there, Johnny. Got one more here from Southern Comfort before we move on. Sound it out. F-A-Q. Fact. Fact. Fake. Fact. To Ashley Moody in the Florida Senate. Suck it. Fact. F-A-Q. Fadish-Q. Fadish-Q. Fact. Fuck. Fuck. Are you just trying to type fuck? You can type fuck if you want to type fuck. Now there goes my monetization. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you, Southern Comfort. Thank you for being here, man. Um, let's real quickly, now that we're like an hour into the vlog, I've been vaping a few things. I don't have a bumper for this, but here's a few things that I've been vaping. Three billet boxes because I love them. This one I have nicknamed uh, Bluegrass. That has the evil alien in it that I won in a freaking contest on Facebook from uh, straight up supply Cl- straight up supply co but this is uh this is bluegrass it's got a uh, punch yeah it's got punch on the inside this one is uh the nugget i have nicknamed him golden boy this has the hakuzeta on the inside with uh Sifu's Peach Among Worlds. And then lastly, this one is nicknamed Harold. And it's got those glow in the dark straight up supply co on it. And it has the uh, Boxer V2 with some Danny Lolo's Cherry Limeade. I love that Boxer V2 way more than I thought I would. So uh, if we're landing in mouth to lung territory, this is the Ivo. Ivo mouth to lung on top of the Bogan 100 Psycho Cruller on the inside. It's been a pretty okay mouth to lung. The flavor's kind of gone into suck fest lately, but it's still not, uh, you know, it's fine. It's still holding up okay. Got that top Phil K fun on there from a guy named Phil. He sent this to me and I started using it. This is filled up with 12 milligram blueberry hill on top of that Hass Tour at a mighty 17 watts. I love a good mouth to lung. Still in mouth to lung country. This is the uh, this is the Aegis uh, fucking thing. What's it called? Nope. Vupu. I vape. Vupu Argus Air. Oh, the battery's dead. Great. Fantastic. Now, if we're going to move into like cloudy country... I wish I didn't say that. Forget that I said cloudy country. <gasps> oh shit, you're right. <sighs> I can't believe I forgot to do that. Where's my nicotine warning? Uh, shit, I don't have a nicotine warning. I don't have my nicotine warning up here. I can't, uh, uh, I don't even have a bottle. Okay, here, here's my nicotine warning. <laughs> Warning, some of the products featured in this vlog video can contain nicotine if the user decides that they want to use the products with nicotine in them. They don't natively come with nicotine. That is a titanium original recipe recoil on top of that uh, Arkless V2. Just busted that out, just put this setup together. It's been real, real enjoyable. This titanium recoil, if I drag on it with just the correct amount of velocity, I get a little whistle from it. Didn't happen that time. Smacks, lick it on the inside. I don't know what they changed that, uh, I don't know what they changed that name to. Uh, still hanging in there hard with the Vupu Argus. Uh, this is just one of those really effortless vapes that you can just vape and vape and it's a coil head and it's like a sub tank and it's awesome. I love it. I just really like this mod. I like the feel of it. 
Hopefully going to review that soon. Uh, this has been like my go-to all day, every day banger. It's the DNA 250C Odin. I recently re-wicked up the uh, uh, Reload Vapor 26 millimeter RTA. Oh, mango on the inside. Oh, boy's mango on the inside. So good. So GD good. And then lastly, oh, it's that Guar mod that I got from DB Mods, DB Liquids over there. I believe they're DB Mods on Instagram. It's just Guar chaos all over it, and I love the crap out of it. It's still a DNA 250C lipo powered on the inside. Lipo powered on the inside. Uh, it's been baller. That is the Rye version 1.2 on top. And I'm still hanging in there hard with the super good number two. This is the one that tastes like a jammy dodger. Tastes exactly like a jammy dodger to me. I miss having so much junk food and jammy dodgers in the house. I miss it. So I vape it instead. Oh, yeah. Blingy fingerprinty, Miller man. Blingy fingerprinty. Oh, sure. Yeah, it is. It's both. Is, are you talking about the Odin 100? Yeah, it, it's blingy and fingerprinty. Look, there's just nothing I can do about it. It's something you're just going to have to deal with, okay? So now that we got that out of the way, and now that we plowed through some news and advocacy, which... By the way, guys, if you want more news and advocacy, tune into my all news show. It's on Tuesday, bro, Tuesdays. I think we're going to take a little bit of a break from news this week, and I'm going to have another guest on that is, uh, well, it might be just a little bit of a surprise. It might be a little bit of a surprise, but he is pretty well known in the industry. He does uh, a little uh, he does a little something called DIYing e-liquid, huh? Oh, let the wild speculation begin. Let it begin. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm excited to have him on. And uh, let's... Uh, crap. Vaping is better than smoking. Technically, yes. But so what? Do you think Cuomo roots for the New York Jets? I feel like he has to root for the New York Jets. Right, like that's like it's his job. Like he has to. Um, let's do some. Uh, let's do some mail. I got a little bit of mail here, so let's open some freaking mail. Well, we've made it to about the halfway point of the vlog. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, sick boy. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're digging the uh, I'm glad you're digging the Tuesday Bro Tuesdays. You know, I wanted to take that show to the next level, and I finally did it. We got some uh, we got some guests. I'm gonna be reaching out to a bunch of people to have them be guests on uh, on Tuesday Bro Tuesday. I think it's gonna be really really good. This bag will not open all the way. Okay, there we go. Now we got it. Let's start off with a very lightweight DHL package because, I don't know, because who cares? Because why not? From China? I mean, this could be, I wouldn't be surprised if I open this box and it's just fucking completely empty. I think it's just completely empty. I do not know. Maybe Michelle Lynn can uh, let us know if there's going to be a That's What She Said this week. I feel like there is not. That's what I've heard. What the hell is this? Oh, okay. Okay, this is a uh, this is a piece to the Pioneer RTA that is, I don't know. How do you feel about that? I think that's uh, a little bit ugly. For anybody listening, if you listen to the podcast version of this, it's kind of heavily engraved with like these little fleur-de-lis type of things, and there's sort of these brass jewels sort of placed on there sure i don't know uh the pioneer rta is going to be up for review uh at some point still been using it now i got this and i don't know if this is 
necessarily something I need to open in, on the vlog. But let's see. It's just a letter. What are you? This is just my mail now. Now we're just opening just my junk mail. Oh! No. Oh, yeah! Oh, sick. Uh, so, billetbox.info. So, I've been going down the billet box rabbit hole, and this person uh, reached out to me. Who is this? Bonnie? Bonnie and Chris? I'm assuming maybe this is Bonnie or Chris reached out to me and wanted to send me some stickers. They run billetbox.info, and they don't sell billet boxes, but they have all sorts of billet box, uh, you know, oh, can I put a billet box sticker right here? Let's see if I can fit one of these right here. They do all sorts of like, uh, you know, billet box sort of information. We want information. There you go. Oh, that's good enough for now. Uh, it says, hey, Nick, been an on and off viewer since 2014. I appreciate your advocacy for the vape industry. Enjoy the rabbit hole. I jumped in a few months ago and was astonished at how little info there was. So I created billetbox.info. Enjoy the stickers. If you need any help, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or the site. Uh, awesome. I'm really stoked. Thank you. I'm going to keep your note with all my notes, all my thousands of notes. And I got some stickers too. And that's dope. Billetbox.info. Let's do another uh, heavier weight DHL package, shall we? Oh, this one looks like it was opened and rummaged through by maybe uh, the United States border security, something like that. What's in here? This looks like, oh, Snappa. It's an RDTA. What else is in here? Cotton! This is an RDTA. Expromiser. This is uh, from Germany. This is a German RDTA. I know uh, very little about it other than I, I was, uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, you want to try this out? And I said, yeah, sure. What is an RDTA? Sure. I'll give it a shot. I've been uh, struggling to love the profile RDTA, but there it is. That's the X Pro Miser RDTA in gunmetal. I think that's pretty slick looking. Uh, I'm hoping that it vapes well, you know. Uh, I've been, like I said, I've been struggling, struggling to love the, the profile mesh RDTA. In fact, that's what I'm gonna name the video. That's what I'm gonna name my review for it is struggling to love the profile mesh RDTA. But they sent along some coils some or this that's mesh as well and some uh some cotton some x pro miser cotton that's cool i'm excited to try that out anybody anybody in the chat just quick show of hands rdtas like you love them they're they're like what you vape does is anybody's main banger like an rdta i, I just would be interested to know I just would be interested to know if anybody's main banger is an RDTA. No, I can live without an RDTA mesh. Yeah, without RDTA's mesh and cables. Yeah, I know. Addy Tooney, your main banger is an RDTA? Nope. Looks like a lot of nopes. Typhon is your number one right now. Leo. Okay, there's a few. No, not really for me. Not really. No, never used one. 50-50 disco potato. Nope, nope. Never tried an RDTA. Nope, nope. Squonker. Not the real Gerard Butler loves RDTAs. Nope. Does the Aromamizer V2 count? Nope, that doesn't count. Yes for now. RTA gang, uh, the bulk is yours. Nope. Nope. Yeah, not a lot of love for RDTAs. RDA and squonks. Nope. All RDA. No, no. Definitely not. No. <laughs> no, no. I don't like them. No. Simpson J Cat. He says his is. Sweet Lou loves an RDTA. Nope. You love RDTAs, Victoria? All right. Combo RDTA. All right. That's cool. Well, look. I mean, you know, it's just interesting to know. I, I, I've never... Uh, I've never really rocked an RDTA as like my main my main vape. Um, what we have here is some Canadian coils. Holy crap, that's a lot of coils, GM coils. 
GM coils sent over. I think uh, every coil that he makes times a, times infinity. Bunch of coils in here. He makes some newer coils as well that I was interested to try out. Maybe I'll throw those in a build stream. Maybe we'll try that on the X Pro Miser. He sent me a shadow box of coils. Look at that. Look at that. It's a shadow box of coils. Are these coils I'm supposed to use? Not supposed to use? Is that just an interesting way to, to use coils? Robbie loves RDTAs. He sent me over a bunch of coils. I'm going to have to go back through my, my emails or DMs and see which ones are like the new fancy ones. He does alien mouth to lungs. You know, I, I carried we, on namberjuice.com when that was a company, we carried some uh, GM coils on there. He did some special GM coils for us. Large fused Clapton's. Anyway, very cool, man. Thank you for the coils. I'll, like I said, I'll never say no to coils. <gasps> And I'll never say no to beer. Why, wow, there's beer, you guys! I know, that is an intense, intense presentation, Scott Jenkins. That is an intense presentation. This is like, this is going to be, I'm going to save this for eventually when I open the Smithsonian of vaping. And this is going to be behind, you know, glass. And it's going to say 2020, you know, 2020 GM coils. What are these? Fused Claptons, a bunch of fucking fused Claptons. Yeah, I kind of don't want to mess with this. Like, I don't want to take any of them out. It's just a, that's a really interesting, uh, interesting fancy way to display coils. Sure, look, stranger things have happened. Look, I have some, <gasps> yeah, dude, uh, yeah, dude, this is beer. You know what beer this is? This is Megadeth beer. I love band-based beer. Saison 13. Dry hopped for 6.1% uh, alcohol. Megadeth beer. I love band-themed beer. I've tried the Clutch beer that, uh, who did that? Uh, Lips of Faith, what company was that? I tried the Clutch Sour, wasn't a huge fan. I tried that, you know, the Iron Maiden, the Trooper beer. I've had the Kiss beer, and now Megadeth. Mega, mega, mega death. Stoked. Stoked for some freaking Megadeth beer. Thank you, Mr. GM Coils. Really appreciate that, man. That's awesome. I'm fascinated by that X Pro Miser, RDTA, especially after seeing so many, like, nope, nope, don't. Don't use them. Don't use RDTAs. Never done them. Never used it. Never used them. It's just interesting to me. Uh, well, I don't know what this is. Let's just open it. Oh, no. Pickle. This is for pickle. This is a pickle gift. Nope. Okay. This is not for me. This was a gift that I ordered for my wife. This was a gift that I ordered for my wife. Yes, it finally got here from China. Well, Pickle, if you're watching the vlog, I have a gift for you. I'm going to put it on the stool next to the door. You see, I'm still technically in quarantine from my wife. I have not even given her a, a hug since I've been home from the rally. I've been relegated to my office and the guest bedroom, and that's really it. Sometimes I sit in the living room if we eat dinner, but we still sit six feet apart. If we're both in the kitchen, I wear a mask. She's just, we're, we're being very, very quarantine careful about this, and so we just have to try to avoid each other, and sometimes she forgets, and she'll just come walking out of her office, like right at me, and I'll just, you know, I'll do one of these, and she stops and like moves back, and for a second, it makes me feel like I have the force. And it's fantastic. I feel like Vader. Like, stop. It's kind of hilarious. Pickle, if you're watching the vlog, your gift is on the stool. If you're not watching the vlog, then that's fine. You'll get it after. You'll get it after. Uh, it is sad because I love my wife. She's my best friend. I, j I like giving her hugs. I, of course, I love kissing my wife. Haven't been able to do that. And it's kind of just depressing me. 
It's just really bumming me out. That's why I went and got a COVID test so I can end this nonsense as soon as I possibly can. I want to sleep in my own bed again. Not that our guest bedroom is, you know, terrible. It's a fine guest bedroom, but it's not my bed. I just want to, li- I just want to sleep in my own bed. I want to lay in my own bed and watch Seinfeld instead of laying in the guest bedroom watching Netflix on my iPad before I fall asleep. It's just depressing. It's just depressing. Maverick Gaming, what deck do you want to see? I don't have a deck for you. I don't have any decks for you. Sorry, we're going to do some, uh, I think a few more Super Chats came in. Let's do the few more Super Chats. Nope, that's it. That's all you get. Uh, Check your email real quick. Oh, now you're giving me homework, Southern Comfort. (sighs) Southern Comfort just says jump. I just say, how high, sir? I'll go check my email so you can give me Southern Comfort. Duh. FAQ is fuck you. Oh, fuck. Fuck you. I still don't get it. (laughs) Southern Comfort. I still don't get it, bro. I still don't get it. FAQ is fuck you. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, fuck you. I, okay. Uh, okay. I get it now. I get it now. Southern comfort. I get it now. I appreciate that. Freaking Sergio, bro. You are just so kind to me every time, Sergio. I love you. I love that you're here. Every vlog you, you're too kind to me. You're too kind to me, Sergio. I really appreciate it. Anthony Ramella in with the super chat. I love it when you sing on the vlog. Can I get a few bars of, uh, I'm still standing better than I ever was. Acting like a true survivor. I need better glasses. And my Elton John impression is bad. That is a terrible Elton John impression. Benny and the Jets, uh, do it and you're cool. Yeah, Benny and the Jets mug. Oh, Benny and the Jets mug. Anthony Ramella, listen, man, I love you. I appreciate all of the support. Uh, Anthony Ramella has been doing some pretty hilarious uh, Photoshop jobbers for me for uh, for the vlog on Thursdays. And today I got to be Elton John. Uh, EB Sting. Uh, when will we hear about why Ruby's not doing Culture Club? Look, you're going to have to wait for her. I'm not going to I'm not going to share Ruby's personal information story on the internet. That is between her and her subscribers. And that's that's all I'm going to say right there. If she texts me and says, "Hey, will you just tell everybody in the vlog?" Then sure, I'll do it. But until then, I'm going to respect her privacy and I'm going to just say when she's when she wants to tell everybody, she's, she'll tell people. And if not, then 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 that's between her and and her subscribers. EB Sting, appreciate you being here though, man. Uh, Barbara, how you doing? Cause shout out my friends from Daddy's Ramen in Oregon who lost home and livelihood due to the fires. Their family uh, to brother, my favorite bagpipes. Oh my gosh! Yes. Well, we're shouting out. Uh, Oh my gosh, your friends from Daddy Ramen in Oregon who lost their home and livelihood due to the fires. There are fires happening everywhere, all across the West Coast. It's crazy. It's been really bizarre outside. I'm sure you've seen it across the internet, but it's like Blade Runner 2099 outside. It's orange. Like today was just yellow. Everything looked sepia. You went outside and it looked like, you know, a sepia filter and you could just smell smoke. You could stare directly at us at the sun. And it was just this faint orange little dot in the sky. Huge shout out to everybody who's dealing with these fires. Huge shout out to all of the firefighters who are some of the most greatest, truest, awesomest heroes on the face of the planet. Nobody's ever said, fuck the fire department, you know? They're, they're loved the world over. Uh, I actually just read a post on Reddit from the LA Fire Department that was talking about um, 
Thank you guys for sending us food and water, but we don't, we really don't need it. Those would be better off sent to somebody else. He's like, we, he's just saying, we prepare for things like this. We have, we pack, like we're going to go for like a week at a time. We've got plenty of food, plenty of rations, plenty of water, this, that, and the other. We just want to fight fires. You know, when we come back to the fire department and there's like a pallet of perishable food there, it generally just goes to waste. This needs to go to people who actually need it. If you really want to support us, you can donate money here, you know. I love the fire department. So if you can support your local fire department because the West Coast is, uh, it's basically on fire. I absolutely agree, Dire Thing. The West Coast needs uh, forest management textbooks. And it freaks me out here because look, I live in the Valley. I live in the beautiful San Fernando Valley. But uh, in the Valley, everywhere, every home in, in, the, in every neighborhood has trees, big trees. We have like four trees in our yard. The trees across the street, they just grow into the power lines. They grow into the, you know, into the power telephone poles and they never come by to trim it. They came by once to trim it and they just like gave up halfway. And we're like, that's it. That's, that's all we have. That's all we're funded for, you know? So we're just going to continue to let these trees grow into the power cables. That's what I worry about. So yeah, we do need a forestry management textbook. Man, that bums me out. Freaks me out too. Freaks me out. But uh, stay safe, everybody. Kevin Chocolate, make an unflavored e-liquid and name it Boring Gand. Holy shit. That's an incredible idea, Kevin Chocolate. That is an un that is an unbelievable idea. Yeah. Anthony, it makes me a valley boy. Like totally a valley boy. <sighs> totally a valley boy. And it's funny because before I lived here, I didn't know like any of the you know, because you always hear people talk about, oh, well, I live in LA. No, no, I live in the valley or I don't want to go to the valley or I live in the hills. You know, I live here. I live there. There's all these different boroughs of Los Angeles that I had no idea. And it's been a, it's been really fascinating living here, learning like, oh, that's the valley. Oh, OK. So when people say valley girl, this is the valley. This is the valley. It's not the L.A. basin. It's not L.A. proper, you know. It's not the Hollywood Hills. It's not NoHo. It's just interesting. It's a very, it's, I love living in L.A. I love California. I love living in L.A. I just wish it wasn't run by freaking morons. My brother is a firefighter in Oregon and is out fighting these fires. Send all your positive vibes to those souls fighting these fires. Fuck yeah, Frames. See, that just gave you so much, so much street cred. Shout out to Frames. Shout out to Frames' brother being a firefighter in Oregon every year. Dude, it's like fire season. It just happens, and it's scary as shit, and I hate it. <sighs> now, let's, uh, what are we going to do? Let's, uh, let's hydrate. I'm glad that I love water so love much. Water. Makes it easy to stay hydrated. Hydro, hydro homies. You need hydro that as a clip. Homies. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Kent. I love water too. I told, I asked Kent to uh, to come to swing by tonight. I said, hey, just pop in the chat for a hot minute. He said, oh, I'm taking a nap. Actually, he didn't say it like that. Kent's like one of my best friends, and I don't mean to, you know, I don't mean to talk shit on him in the vlog. He, he said he was, he's taking a nap. He has a really weird, like Leonardo da Vinci, like sleeping schedule. He sleeps like for a half hour, every three hours or something like that. Like at the end of 10 years, he'll have an extra five years of life that nobody else gets. Cause he wasn't sleeping. And so he was, a, he was going to take a nap you see, because Kent spends a hundred percent of his time building coils. I don't know if you follow twisted messes on Instagram, but you definitely should because his coils have been insane. Like, fucking witchcraft like no human should be able to wrap coils like this but he's doing it and he spends like he'll stay up like all night until the sun comes up he's like i was just twisting up and polishing this 50 gauge ribbon wire and twisting it into a, a braid around the fucking you know thing and he's like it turned out pretty good and i'm like what how do you what so he's a crazy person He's a crazy person. 
Sorry, I just want to have a vape. I haven't had a vape like in the whole vlog. Yeah. Yeah. Vape amongst yourselves for just a hot second. Oh, there's the, uh, there's that little bit of a whistle that happens. This is the only cap I've ever had from the recoil where if I drag just, just at the right velocity, gives me a little bit of a whistle. It happens when I over drip, which is constantly, it's like I don't know how to drip anymore. All right. Yeah. Doing good. Feeling good. <coughs> let's, uh, let's have some beer. Okay. What I want to do right now, what I would like to do right now, you heard that whistle back in 2014, Scott Jenkins, you liar. You're a liar. Why do you have to be a liar all the time? Why do you have to lie to me all the time? <coughs> why, do you have, why do you have to lie to me? Um, ah! Well, I'm sure that's broken. Uh, what I want to do right now is uh, let's retro vape. I want to retro vape. Uh, let me just find the bumper real quick on my stupid ass stream deck that's stupid. Can I find the retro vape bumper? Technically, no, but. So what? Okay, here it is. Ah, I barely made it back in time. I barely made it back in time. Okay, so what we're going to be retro vaping, what we're going to be retro vaping tonight, this came to us last week from Myrtle Beach Vapor. Myrtle Beach Vapor. Jeff Stokes, I'm doing top notch this evening. I'm doing tip top, top notch this evening. What we're going to be tasting, this came from Myrtle Beach Vapor last week. I'm just going to open it. Oh, mama. Okay, this does not come with a Clearomizer Disco Potato. I thought it did, but it definitely does not. This was my daily carry for a really long time. This was my daily carry for a very, very long time. I absolutely loved the crap out of this. Now that Logan Exhales is here, we can finally do retro vaping. We're going to be doing the iTaste SVD tonight, you guys. Brand new, in the box, iTaste SVD. This was one of the weird... Listen to this rattle. This was one of the weirdest, wonkiest ass... Fucking weirdest ass, wonky mods that, I, that Inakin has ever released. But I loved it. I loved it. I know. I'm so bummed it didn't come with a uh, didn't come with an iClear 30. That's fine because we have one from last week, if you remember correctly. We can still do. We can still do it. Ooh, and it's even gurgly, so I know it's gonna vape. We can still throw an iClear 30 on here. So, the SVD was telescoping. You see how I can telescope this up and it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up that was because it can fit a multitude of batteries in here 18650s uh 16340s uh that's it basically there was also an i taste svd little expansion thing that you could get that made this shorter so you could fit even shorter batteries in here and it was regulated. In fact, I spent so much time with this device that I did ended up doing two reviews for it because they updated it like halfway through the production run and like actually, actually updated it, like fixed problems with the interface and things like this. It had a, uh, a little, whatever we call it, beauty ring on it. This is an ego connection on there. I don't know if anybody is hip to an ego connection, but that was an ego connection on there so that you could fit ego style clearomizers on there. And then it had this beauty ring so that you could fit whatever other RTAs like Cardo tanks. I used to rock this with, I wish I had a Cardo tank tonight. See, that would be the ultimate. I wish I had a Cardo tank tonight. And you can't see it in this beauty ring, but there's all these little like notches and facets 
all over the top of this. And like every three of them has a hole drilled all the way through. And that's where like airflow is supposed to go through. Airflow. That's where your airflow came through. So I'm going to put an 18650 in here if I can. Yep. This was just a fucking baton. That's how I would describe it. It is a baton. Super tall. This is a super tall regulated mod. Now, this was a, this was in a day and age in vaping. Look at this display. There it is. Really simple like LCD display. Off? No, on. One, two, three. Yeah, there. Now it's on. This was a time when tube mods were everything. Tube mods were life. Everybody was trying to compete with the Pro Vary. You know, the Pro Vary was out there, or as some people called it, the Pro Vary, which made no fucking sense. If you said Pro Vary, you're wrong. You were just wrong. There's just no way around it. Because when you say variable voltage, you say variable voltage, pro very variable voltage. You don't say variable voltage. No one says variable. It wasn't pro vary. It was pro vary. And I don't care. I'll d <laughs> I will die on this hill that it was pro vary and not pro vary. If you said pro vary, I'd like to punch you. No, I'm just kidding. I don't like to, I wouldn't like to punch you. But let's put this iClear 30S on here. Look how tall this is. Comparatively, here's a Mac with an RDA. Here's the freaking iTaste SVD with an iClear 30S on it. Ridiculous. Everybody at that time was trying to compete with the Pro Vary, and then iTaste released this baton of a mod. It's a baton of a mod. Look how tall it is compared to this mech mod. That's insane. That is insanity. And I had this really weird, like, the buttons were on the side. So there was a button here and a button here on, you know, for both of your fingers. And that's how you adjusted the, the voltage and the wattage. Uh, oh, no. Okay, I locked it. I don't even remember how to use this. Nope. Hold it again. Okay, 3.5 volts, 3.6 volts. Okay, there you go. Now we're adjusting the wattage. Now we're adjusting the voltage up and down using these two buttons right here. That's the way it worked. And then you had a fire button on the back. Different versions of this. Sometimes the fire button lit up. Sometimes it didn't. Let's see if we can give this a pull. Let's see if we can give this baton a freaking toot. I am gatekeeping pronunciation, sick boy. I'm gatekeeping that particular pronunciation. I will do that. I will take that to the grave. Mmm. Mmm. This needs some more wattage. This is uh, this is insane. Let's turn this up. Ooh, how high can we go? Four point six volts, dude. We're about to live on the edge here. Let's swivel the swivel tip towards me, just like that. Yeah, of course, pinky up. Of course, pinky up. That was actually a pretty satisfying little vape there. Still filled up with a pink spot, pink spot on the inside. Um, this really takes me back. You know where this takes me back to? This takes me back to being a coffee roaster at Starbucks. This takes me back to being a quality. This takes me back to working at uh, Starbucks in the distribution center. This is when I worked in the distribution area. And I would have to chain vape outside for 15 minutes you know, cause you got 15 minute breaks every two hours. So I just chain vape this thing. And at that time there was no other vapors at Starbucks. Like it was me and maybe like two other dudes and they all had little sigalikes and I show up with this baton in my pocket and I'm just out there just
just using it and I felt ridiculous. I've always felt ridiculous. Didn't even care. <laughs> Didn't even care. That's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of being in the freezing cold outside holding a metal baton. Metal baton. Elbows up. Old school Thomas Crow. Here we go. And it also reminds me of, there was a hallway, there was a bathroom in a hallway that I used to sneak to sometimes to vape in the bathroom. I shouldn't be saying this. It doesn't matter. What's Starbucks going to do? Fire me. I used to go in the bathroom and vape and this was in my back pocket going into the bathroom to sit on the toilet with my phone and sit at Starbucks and vape in the bathroom. That's what this reminds me of. I would love to go find my old I Taste SVD video. I taste, oops, I taste, 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 SVD. Yep, search for I taste SVD and mine is the first search result, sucka. Uh, yeah, March 2013. This video has 102,000 views. 102,000 people watch the freaking I taste SVD video. That isn't, that is lunacy. That is craziness. That is craziness. Here, let me see if we can do this. Uh, window capture. Let's uh, let's try this. Oh yeah, there I am. Yeah, there it is. There's Young Grim Green reviewing the I Taste SVD. You can't hear it, but I'm I'm talking about it. Hi, I'm Grim Green, and I'm wearing a Guar T-shirt. And this is back when I had hair, and I'm reviewing the I Taste SVD. With that's a card. No, that's a uh, that's an RDTA on the top. That's an old RDTA on the top. It was who made that? A German company made that, and it was an RDTA. That's the only way I can describe it. It had a a, a coil at the top that you rebuilt, and the wicks, silica wicks, came down into the tank. Unbelievable! Look how far we've come in in, in two thousand in, since two thousand thirteen. Yep, revisiting the iTaste SVD. Oh, you missed my cool graphics at the bottom. That's when I was uh, trying to use everything green. I just wanted everything to be green because, you know, because grim green, right? Yeah, Michelle Lynn. Is it a douche flute? Technically, yes, but so what? Exactly, it was. This was the definition of a douche flute, but well, let's wrap this up. It was ridiculous, look. Myrtle Beach Vapor, thank you for the retro eye taste SVD. This is going to go on the retro shelf. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised how well this is still vaping. I'm surprised. Yeah, exactly, Ben. Before I started dyeing my hair gray to be taken more seriously. Because that's a normal thing that people do. I'm gonna go put this on the uh, on the retro vape shelf. I'm gonna condense it down just a little bit so that it's not nine feet tall on my shelf. So every time I look at it, it just fucking falls over. But it's gonna sit there next to my I Taste 134. Next to that. Uh, next to that. What did we do last week? Yeah, that Joy Tech Evic. Yeah. Right in front of my box of strawberry smiggles. That's just where it's gonna live now. So huge shout out to Myrtle Beach Vapor. I am I'm gonna definitely keep this packaging because I feel like I don't know. I just I just want to. I just need to keep the packaging. I feel like it's 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 a yeah it's a it's a thing. It's like a collector thing. You know I keep all the packaging for my billet box stuff. The douche bassoon. <laughs> The douche bassoon. Let's do a couple more of these super chats before we get to a uh, very, very random liquid tasting. Yep, that's it. That's all you get. That's all you get. Actually, let's, first of all, let's hydrate. Uh, do I have any hydration memes ready to go? I definitely don't, but we can listen to this. The only thing I want to see in your mouth is that water bottle. Now, what did I tell you? Always be hydrating. Yeah, stay hydrated. Oh, I have to give a shout out to uh, 
Oh, I forgot to do this at the beginning. This is an actual sponsor of the vlog, the coldest water bottle. This is the best water bottle that I have ever owned slash used slash ever owned ever in my entire life. It keeps my water cold literally all day. I have run experiments where I've filled this up with ice water and been outside all day long in the hot San Fernando Valley sun. It gets so hot to where I can barely even touch the water bottle. It's just, it feels like a, an, a, a the surface of an oven and on the inside nothing but clear crystal cool water if you are a truck driver if you leave your water bottle in your car and you come back and you're like oh, i'm really thirsty but that water is probably boiling hot such is not the case with the coldest water bottle i'll have a link down in the description you can use the code grim to get 10 percent off your order and remember that nicotine uh nicotine is not a crime nicotine is not a crime so let's, uh, were there any more super chats? Were there a couple more super chats? Uh, living hints. I remember what Iron Maiden's The Trooper said. I remember what Iron Maiden's The Trooper said. I love The Trooper, both the song uh, and the beer. It was a really good beer. Tom, very gracious of you. Which Star Wars character sells hot dogs? Admiral Snack Bar. <laughs> What the what? Admiral Snack Bar. I, well, I, <laughs> thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. You know, the other day was Star Trek Day, and I completely forgot. I didn't do anything cool for Star Trek Day. I didn't even watch any Star Trek on Star Trek Day. That's right, Thomas Crow. Elbows up. Go old school. Go elbows up with a mech mod. That's really the how to do it. Appreciate you being here, Thomas Crow. Not Dash, your iTaste SVD video was one of the very first vape videos that I ever watched. I can't even tell you how much you've helped me over the years. Well, thank you, De Not Dash. I appreciate that. That it's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, thank you for sticking around this long. You know, I sometimes get in these weird like moods and like, what am I even doing here in the vape community? Like, how am I staying? How am I trying to stay relevant after 11 years on YouTube? 11 years I've been doing this. I started this off and it was just like a hobby. You know, I was working, I had a full-time job and I'm just like, this is fun. I'll review vape stuff like on the weekends and I'll review stuff that I get in the mail and I'll be part of the community that's, you know, this little burgeoning growing community on ECF when it was like maybe a thousand people, maybe. Oh, this is fun and I'll be part of it. And then it just kept growing, kept growing and kept growing and kept growing and eventually I fucking quit my job to just do this, to just be this person on the internet and it is crazy it, it, it's it's the, the amount of pressure like this is not an easy thing to do it's fun and it's the most rewarding thing i've ever done but i i put extra pressure on myself i i get in my own head all the time you know i get i worry about how am i going to stay relevant how do i keep people coming back you know even today with just this dumb little simple thumbnail took me hours to do because I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. And I I'm I'm keep bringing Casey in here and I'm like, will you look at this thumbnail? Is this good? Would you watch this? Would you click this thumbnail if you saw it? You know, I'm trying to get all this. And Casey's like, just do what you want. Just do what you want to do. Like make it look how you want it to look. Just trust your gut, like trust yourself. I have a hard time doing that. So not Dash, I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad you're still here and I appreciate you being here, man. That actually really helps out my, my mind a lot. <laughs> that really helps me out. Living Hints, very gracious of you. Uh, I want Scott Jenkins, oh, chat, there's a challenge on the floor, I think. I want Scott Jenkins to put his money where his mouth is. Whoa, my personal favorite, born, born to hand jive, Shana na, Canadian spelling. My personal favorite, born to hand jive Shana na. Living hints. I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm assuming that Scott Jenkins knows what that means. I I don't know. I don't. I'm, if this is an inside joke, I am on the uh, I am on the outside of it. <laughs> Thank you, Livin' Hints. Uh, 
Okay, Frank, uh, well, got one more from Frank here. Let's got a squeaker here. Frank, uh, glad you enjoyed the retro vape. If I find any more new ones, I'll send them your way. Myrtle Beach Vapor. Oh, Frank, yes. I really enjoyed the retro vape. Uh, we got a few Inakin retro vapes and one smoke retro vape from Frank that we're going to be going through. But yeah, dude, if you run across any new, uh, any new old school vape products, I'd love to try them out. I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to try them out. Southern comfort. Well, thank you very much. I'm here to watch the, watch the vlog, not your lame thumbnail. I know, but look, this is, and thank you, Southern Comfort. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you being here and coming back every single time. I really do appreciate it, man. Really very much. And then you just laugh at me. That's fine. You just laugh at me some more. You know, the thing, as as a YouTuber, as a person, as a, as a whatever this is, it, you know, I put all this unnecessary pressure on myself and... You know, I have to think about things like replay value and getting clicks and, you know, views. And I worry about my view count and I worry about my subscriber count and I worry about my SEO. And sometimes I'll, you know, I'll go back to an old video just from a few weeks ago and it'll be like, you know, YouTube will tell me, oh, your SEO score for this video is like 80% and 10 of your videos appear in the recommended videos because your SEO is so good. And I'm like, hey, that's fantastic. I love seeing stuff like that. And then I'll go to a vlog from a few days ago or a video from like four weeks ago and my SEO score is like 12% and it says none of your videos appear in the recommended videos because your SEO sucks so much donkey butt. And I'm thinking, I didn't, I didn't do anything thing really that different. I do the same thing I do every single time. The title, the tags, the description, okay, and links, and I know, and things, and tags, and you got to have the same words in the title, and in the description, and in your tags. That's how you up your SEO score. I didn't learn that till recently. That's a, that's a thing apparently, and so it just gets, it just gets weird for me, and disheartening, and, and you know, I, these are things that I have to think about and I'm glad you're here to watch the vlog and that's ultimately, you know what, Southern Comfort? That's all I care about. I just care that you guys are here right now. It doesn't matter what you're fighting. It doesn't matter. You're fighting the good fight. Well, <laughs> thank you, Southern Comfort. I really appreciate that. And, you know, this isn't like, I don't want this to become, you know, this isn't a pity party for Grim Green. This is just, you know, I'm just being real. This is, this is the shit I think about. This is the shit I deal with. And, you know, it goes across not just YouTube, you know, it's like when you see your YouTube numbers trending downward, that's a bummer. You know, when you see your YouTube views trending downward, sure, that's a bummer. But then you have to, you have to care about Instagram. You know, I have to create these little posts and these little things for Instagram. And lately I've been having fun, like doing Instagram stories. So I'm like, cool, I'll just keep that going. I like doing Instagram stories. That's fun. And then I think about Twitter and then every once in a while, it's like, I'm constantly getting on Twitter. I could waste my whole day on Twitter and just arguing with people and posting articles and posting links and just arguing with people that are like, why didn't, you know, there was this, someone posted the governor, Ron DeSantos, you know, uh, vetoing that bill and People are like, why? Why did he veto that? This is going to save children's lives. If the vapes are really hurting kids, then he, he should have signed this into law. And I'm like, okay, well, now I have to argue with you, you, you un, uninformed person. And I have to do it in like the nicest way possible. And that takes time away. And, you know, I struggle with, uh, I struggle with, with reviews, like doing, like ha finding the time to do reviews. And sometimes I think like, well, we got Mike vapes, you know, we got Mike vapes, we got Matt, we got, uh, Rip Trippers is back. We got plenty of people doing reviews and we got new people jumping into reviews. Frames is doing reviews now, which is awesome. And TT Vape, I saw him do a review recently on, on Instagram. It's great. And so I think, do I even bother doing the profile RDTA review? Is anybody going to care at this point what Grim Green thinks of the profile RDTA? Maybe. Maybe if it helps some people, then that makes it worth it. And then I struggle with trying to find time to do these things when I'm spending so much time on Twitter and so much time here and so much time trying to do little Instagram stories and you know trying to do the YouTube videos and get getting stuff together for the stream and doing all my stuff for Tuesday Bro Tuesday and I'm you know I'm just one dude and I'm trying to do it as best I can and I'm just you know ultimately I'm just trying to do right by the community. I just want to do right by the community that has treated me so incredibly well over the years. I just want to make you guys proud, you know? Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to just vent. I'm just being real. 
Just getting real. This is just getting real. Getting real with Grim Green. Getting real. Stay getting real. And see, that's the thing is, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything bad about any other YouTubers, but being real doesn't necessarily mean just being an asshole. You know, that's what people associate like, oh, well, he keeps it real. You know, he just talks shit on a lot of stuff. Oh, he keeps it real. No, he, you, you're just being an asshole. There's a difference, you know, being real. It's not necessarily just being an asshole. I'm being real with you guys right now. This is the shit I struggle with. <laughs> this is the shit I kind of, this is the kind of shit I struggle with. Um, Tom, uh, very gracious of you. Casey is right. Do what you like, because guess what? We happen to like it too. Well, I know. Thank you, Tom. And I really appreciate that, you know, but again, it's one of those things I just get in my own head and uh, it, it's one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm working on. I'm trying to not do that. I'm trying to trust my gut. I'm trying to, you know, and as being a creative person in, in this creative space where, you know, you're expected to have really cool thumbnails and like, oh, really cool things and all the coolest mods and all the neatest stuff. And look, I would love to be able to focus on a lot more hardware and stuff like that and have all the cool stuff and have all the neat hemo squonkers and things like that. But I chose to go down this fucking advocacy path that I, I, I just did. I just, I came to the fork in the road and I just went, okay, I'll fight. I'll be the advocacy thing. That's what I'll do. And I realized that that's not the sexiest, most entertaining, you know, thing about vaping. It's probably the least entertaining, most depressing thing about boring, about, you know, about vaping. I just feel compelled to do it. I just feel compelled to do it. But I'm glad you like it, Tom. You mean a lot to me. I appreciate you being here. I know you're a real longtime subscriber as well, man. Southern Comfort, but seriously, Ron DeSantis is my boy. That's right. And look, uh, hopefully Ron DeSantis gains a lot of votes from this. But hopefully Ron DeSantis keeps being governor of Florida, assuming that he's still working in your best interests. I think Ron DeSantis has locked down Southern Comfort's vote. Absolutely. The same way that if Gavin Newsom in California had vetoed it and said that this will lead people to smoking and then this will lead people to the black market, he would have my vote. The fact that he signed it into law, he lost my vote. That's, you have the power. You have the touch. You got the power. Fuck you, Moody. That's right, Southern Comfort. All right, uh, let's, here, let me pause the super chats really quickly. I appreciate you guys. Okay, let me do one more. Ford Power, very gracious of you. You've kept me coming back for 10 years. I don't watch any other vaping YouTubers anymore. Thanks for helping us all. I've brought endless, I've bought endless products on your recommendations. Never been disappointed. Yeah, see, thank you, Ford Power. I really do appreciate that. And I don't ever, ever want to steer anybody wrong. And if like, especially with liquids, it's one of those things where I say, I really like this liquid, but you might not. It's a really, it's a really like interesting, weird, and you know, that poet sweet black tea. That's one of those flavors that I love that I know not a lot of people are going to be loved, but I got to, you know, I got to tell you, I got to be honest. You might not like this. I really like it, but you might not. As far as hardware goes, goes, I know what I like and I know what I like to vape. And if something sucks, eh, then it sucks. And I'm not going to say anything nice about it. And if something's baller and if something's banging like this Argus GT, it, this is baller. This is, you would, if you buy this, if you need a 20, the dual 18650 mod with like a sub ohm tank, that's really slick and cool. I would really recommend this. It's not junk. This is legit. And I don't want to steer anybody in the wrong direction. You know, it's a lot of responsibility Ford power. Anyway, I appreciate you being here, Ford Power. Jeremiah broke out my avid, avid gyra for the vlog. Thanks for what you do. The avid G R G Y R E. Hang on. I don't know what this is. Am I going to have to Google this? Oh, avid life mod. Okay, I get you. I get you. This is the Avid Life, AV Life, but after they became, after they were Amerivape. I got you, bro. Appreciate that, Jeremiah. You vape that thing like it owes you money. 
British eyes, you want to vent? Come hang out on my Discord more often. You juggaloon. I don't know if I can say that. Drink some of those beers already. East Coast beers keep the mind clear. Boosh. Uh, look, green watering can is coming up soon, my man. SVK, starting my vacation by watching the vlog and happy living in Florida. Get to vape another day and shout out to everyone here. We vape, we vote. Damn it, SVK vapes. You get it. Appreciate you being here, man. Logan. Grim Green isn't thumbnails, logos, and catchphrases. You're the guy we all tune into because we love and support you. Damn it, Logan. Well, thank you. Stop giving me Stop giving me so many feels, Logan. Stop giving me so many feels. Congratulations on your podcast, by the way. If you guys don't listen to the Logan Exhales Rise and Vape podcast, you're really missing out because I love Logan Exhales. I think his podcast is just going to take off. Really, really good. Thank you for being here, Logan. Someday we'll get to hang out way more than we did at the rally. Matching carpet, very gracious of you. The OG Recoils airflow is still the goat. Change my mind. Look, Stephen Crowder, I am not going to be able to change your mind about this. I I love the OG Recoil airflow. I absolutely freaking lutely love it. Also, by the way, we're running long tonight. Southern Comfort, I already voted for him first time. I'm a Republican. Yeah, there you go. You voted him for the first time. And that's good. I'm glad he didn't let you down. That's such a rare thing, isn't it? When you vote for somebody and, and then, then they don't let you down. I love that. And see, yeah, that's the thing, Southern Comfort. So I know that we don't always agree on everything. You know, even lately, I've become like a little bit, you know, I don't want you to leave or unsubscribe. I'm, I'm still a staunch libertarian, freedom guy first and foremost, but I recently took that political compass test and I lean just a hair to the left side of libertarianism. Like I'm libertarian, dead bottom center. And then I lean off to the left just a little bit, just, just a little bit, you know, it's just one of those things. But you got to vote your hopes. I love that. I love that you voted for him, and I love that he didn't let you down. And fucking A, shout out Governor Ron DeSantos. Being reasonable. Being a reasonable person. All right, let's 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 pause the super chats for right now, you guys. I appreciate you. I love you. I did not mean to vent and rant so much, but like I said, I'm just, you know, I got to be honest with you. I got, I got nothing to hide. I got no reason to not be completely honest with you guys. How about we taste some liquid? You want to do that? Let's uh, let's taste the liquid. <laughs> My main man, Sifu Mustache. He is the maker of Peach Among Worlds. Kick it root down. Just a stellar guy all around, Sifu. Hope you're doing well. Uh, he sent me a Yig clone. What? What? Okay. Y- Yig clone. This is from Sifu Stash. And it says, uh, this is not the greatest Yig in the world. No, this is just a tribute. What up, Tenacious D? Yeah, Sifu's Stash sent me a Yig clone. Yig, as some may remember, was from the Grim Cult line of e-liquids that, uh, unfortunately, due to more reasons than I would ever care to talk about, simply does not exist anymore. Not for lack of trying. I tried. I was not successful. I wanted to release all the recipes for the DIY world. That was just not in the cards, you know? That was just not in the cards, and I I don't want to talk about it. But we got a Yig clone. Now, I have vaped mountains of Yig in my life. Mountains of it. Mountains. I vaped it for years and years. So I think I'm going to be able to judge this Yig clone. Okay. 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 That's very, very interesting. What I have here is an original recipe recoil sitting on top of my other Satan covered def mods. The big lipo pack. I kind of get a little bit of Yig. I kind of get a little bit of... Uh, Okay, maybe it's just my weird brain right now. You know, the knuckle test isn't always indicative of what an e-liquid is going to taste like. A lot can change between the knuckle test and the uh, and the actual vape experience. But we got some vapors happening. Yeah, we do. 
So I'm going to keep these nice and wet. Yeah, we do. So we're going to taste this Yig clone. Sorry, not a Yig clone. It is not the greatest Yig in the world. No, this is just a tribute. Now, if I can muscle on this uh, top cap, which this is one of those recoil decks. Now, the recoil RDA might be my favorite RDA of all time, but it doesn't keep it from being a fucking pain in the ass sometimes. <laughs> just sometimes... Uh, I can't, uh, it does not want to uh, cooperate. And this is, that's just sealed on there forever. Sometimes, occasionally, there's just these random old recoil decks. This is probably one of the oldest recoil decks that exists. It's just a bitch to get the top cap on. 99% of them, it's super easy. Sometimes it is just a bitch. Yeah, for British eyes only, this is the Satan slab. I guess that's what we're going to call it. The old Satan slab here from uh, from Def Mods. Red recoil RDA on there. I'm just going to have one inaugural toot, as it were. I'm going to vape it, and we'll come back and talk about it. Oh, shit, Sifu. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna sit back real quick, just for a second, uh, and vape this, and we'll come back and talk about it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off my microphone so there's gonna be no sound. It's gonna sound like this. I'm gonna take a bio break too and vape this in the bathroom. Okay, Sifu, here's the thing. This is not a bad little tribute to Yig. It's, I mean, look, I'm not saying that I had low expectations, but I kind of set my expectations just to def just to zero, you know, just uh, zero. I said, I'm not going into this either way. I just, I want to taste it. You know, I want to taste it for what it is. If, if, if 100% was like the perfect y clone of Yig, this would be at like a solid, like 85%. It's like 85% Yig. There's just, there's a little difference of, it's not quite as creamy as Yig is. And there's one flavor in this that I can't quite place my finger on, you know? I cannot quite place my finger on of what it is. It almost tastes a little bit like star anise. 
like maybe a, a like a, a whisper, like a whisper of black licorice in there or something. But it is quite yiggy. It's got like a little bit of creamy custard, a little bit of that like oatmeal cookie kind of flavor to it. There's something going on. Like I said, a perfect like one for one clone of Yig. This would be like, this is like 80 to eight. I'd say like, yeah, like eight out of 10, eight out of 10 stars. It's almost, almost Yig. This is a really great tribute to Yig. I have not tried any clones of Yig yet. I know Addy Tooney sent over a Portuguese Yig, which I'm really interested to try as well. No, star anise for British eyes only. Get your head out of the gutter, you lunatic. <laughs> the missing flavor is truth butter. That very well could be, man. That very well could be. But yeah, it's like, it's right there. It's just there. I would give this an 8 out of 10. It's damn near almost yig. Almost yig. Now, I don't know if you're going to be selling this or not. I think you should just release the recipe for the DIY world to 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 do to to vape it, to fiddle with it. You know, the supply of yig in the world is running out. It's limited. Also, what I'm going to do with this sifu is I'm going to let it steep because yig really gets better. Okay, he put it on e-liquid recipes, Addy Tooney. There you go, e-liquid recipes. It's on there. Black currant, okay, butterscotch meringue, oatmeal cookie, super sweet, sweet cream, sweet currant, vanilla custard. Damn, that that is, uh... there's the recipe right there. If, if you're looking for Yig, if you miss Yig, this is a solid Yig tribute. Here's what I would say is, I'm going to let this steep because Yig gets better with time. Yig steeped. Now here, I'm going to take some, some Yig here. See, this is a really, really steeped bottle of Yig. Really steeped. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on my knuckle, but it comes out like just dark. Damn, that is, it is really close, Sifu. So I'm going to let this steep up. I'm going to let this steep. And we'll come back to it at a later date. And we'll see how it stacks up. In fact, maybe next time, maybe in a vlog, in a future vlog, I'm going to set up two RDAs. We'll put them like side by side. You know, we'll put them side by side. But damn it, that is a really good tribute. Really nice tribute to Yig, Sifu. Really nice tribute to Yig. Anyway, yeah, Sifu, really appreciate it. That was fun. I liked tasting that. I, I like that. In fact, it almost tastes like a version of Yig, like the like one of the first few versions. You know, but it, recipes go through trials and things like this, where it's like, oh, it needs more of this, needs more of that, needs less of this, needs less of that. That could have been a version of Yig. You know, I don't know what this motion is. Somewhere along the way. Anyway. Uh, I know that I did uh, uh, rant at you for quite a while, but would you like to get to know Grim Green right now? Okay. So what we've been doing in the getting to know Grim Green portion, which by the way, we're running long. Appreciate you guys being here. Holy shit. Kent's here. Twisted Massails. Twisted Mouses, Kent is awake. What we've been doing lately in the Getting to Know Grim Green segment of the vlog is music. And this is just a throwback to like 2013. If you want to go way back into the Grim Green library, some of my very early first vlogs, I always included a music segment of just some new shit that I'd been listening to, you know? And this is before YouTube, like copyrights and things like that. And I just used to play a little bit of it in the stream, I, or not in the stream, in the video. I'd be like, oh, this is, uh, you know, I even have a playlist on, 
on uh, uh, YouTube that is all of the bands that I talked about in the vlog. And so music has kind of been a part of the vlog for a really long time. For a few years it was gone, but now it's back, baby. Oh, it's back. I got a playlist on Spotify, the GTKGG playlist that is everything that we talk about. And we're going to be adding two songs to the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist, kind of building off of what we talked about last week was Queens of the Stone Age, right? Queens of the Stone Age is what we talked about last week. This week, we have another stoner rock band that I would be, look, besides maybe Vapelians, I would be shocked if anybody else knows who this band is and that's not trying to be like some fucking hipster obscure thing like uh, I only I know who this band is. They're so obscure you probably never heard of them before. Anybody? Slow burn? Anybody hip to slow burn? If you're hip to slow burn, I would like to know about it. If, if you're in the chat, just give me a thumbs up if you're hip to slow burn. But this is their EP called Amusing the Amazing. It's only four songs long. So two of these songs are are going on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. And the story, look at this, it's like a tiny record. It's just small. It's like an EP. It's like a seven inch, you know? It's not quite a seven inch. It's like a, a 10 inch or something like that. It's a tiny little record, ha half size record, you know? Tiny little record. Um, the story behind Slow Burn is, this goes, Ford Power, you're hip to Slow Burn. The story behind Slow Burn is, this is a Mark Moots record. Mark Moots, uh, at one point in time, just flipped my musical world upside down. He burned me a whole bunch of CDs and Slow Burn was one of the CDs that he burned me. And the singer of this band, John Garcia, was the singer of, a, of another stoner rock band that I love named Caius. Yeah. Also in that band, Caius, Trey, you're hip to Slow Burn. Kevin Chocolate's hip to slow burn. B-Dub's hip to slow burn. Silent Drive is hip to slow burn. In the last Getting to Know Grim Green, we did Queens of the Stone Age. The singer guitar player of Queens of the Stone Age, Josh Homme, was in Caius with John Garcia. John Garcia left Caius on, you know, whatever. Not great terms from what I understand. And he started with the drummer of Caius, Slow Burn. They only lasted one album. They released like two EPs. They released nine songs total. And then that's it. They broke up. No more No more Slow Burn. John Garcia went in to be in uh, Unita, which Unita was great. In fact, I think John Garcia was in Hermano as well, if memory serves correctly. But John Garcia, he's got such a great stoner rock, like such a distinct voice and these songs are some of the best. They could have been on like a Caius record, but they're not. They're on the Slow Burn record and this is the only place to get them. Look at these guys just hanging out in Palm Springs doing nothing. And this is only four tracks long and it's one of those CDs that, you know, when I was going through Mark Moots's box of CDs, I put it in and I didn't know the history of any of these bands. You know, I had just been listening to them. And when I came to Slow Burn, I'm thinking, God, this guy sounds exactly like Caius. I wonder if this is the same guy from Caius. I wonder if this is the same guy from Unita. It is. It's John Garcia. And once you hear John Garcia's voice, it's just unmistakable. And it's so good. So, we're going to put two songs on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. Two, two great songs. The Prize Fighter, yeah, that's going on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify pay playlist. And Pilot the Dune, that is the banger of this little slow burn EP. That's just a little piece of like stoner rock history that they were a band for like a year and then that's it. No more slow burn. And there's so many bands like that. Like, I don't know if anybody else has heard of uh, Pride Tiger. If you Are you hip to, anybody hip to Pride Tiger? Pride Tiger was one of those bands that, same thing. They got together, they released one album. It was incredible. I got to see them live once and then that's it. They just broke up. They're just gone. Pride Tiger's gone forever. And I loved 
fucking pride tiger loved pride tiger slow burns the same way you know but the thing is pride tiger broke up and then i never heard like the band members like i'm like okay they never started anything else you can kind of follow John Garcia. Like if you like John Garcia and you like that fuzzy sort of stoner rock sound, you can go, oh, okay, he was in Caius. You can listen to Slow Burn. You can listen to Hermano. You can listen to Unita. And it's kind of like all these bands, it could be a little bit like they they could cover each other's songs and you wouldn't even know. You'd, you'd think that it was their own song that they had written. It's all kind of a similar genre, you know? It's a few bangers, just a few bangers from uh, the history of Grim Green. I I love this album. I saw it at uh, Amoeba Records. They had one copy and I couldn't not buy it. Four songs, couldn't not buy it. So The Prize Fighter and Pilot the Dune, yeah. They're going on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. Brian, I am drinking, uh, for anybody who's just joining us for some reason, Cabra Loca. Yeah, Cabra Loca. That's what we're drinking tonight. Cheers to you, Brian. Boosh. And that, my friends, is how you do a vlog. That's it. We're done. Bye. I'm just kidding. We're uh, we're here. We're winding down to the end of the vlog. Uh, I'm going to take one quick, like I said, I'll have a link down in the description to the Spotify playlist. If anybody's interested in it, it's just bangers. It's it's some of just all my favorite music of all time. It covers a wide variety of genres. It goes from from death metal to like Warren Zevon to like some stoner rock. There's Slow Burn. There's Fu Manchu. There's Witchcraft on there. There's Sepultura, Megadeth. You know, all these great bands. All these great songs on there. And uh, I, I have I'll have a playlist. I have a link down in the description where you can check it out, or you can just check it out. Let's go another hour, Gordo. Woo! No, I don't think I have the energy right now to go another hour. I don't know if you guys know, but it is kind of, it's a little bit, I'm hot. It's, I'm sweaty. It's tiring to just imagine getting on the internet. Gordo, imagine that you just like, I'm going to get on the internet and try to be entertaining for like two and a half hours just by myself. Go, <laughs> just go, just jump right into it. It's a little bit. It's a little bit of a drain. It's a little bit of a taxing, draining a thing. Let's stay hydrated, Hydro Homies. One more time. Sponsor, coldest water bottle. They're an actual sponsor of the vlog. In fact, I'm, I've lined up another sponsor possibly for the vlog. They make clothing. They make t-shirts. Don't want to spoil it. Don't want to spoil it. But I might have lined up another spot, Spotify. Spotify, sponsor. My vote is for another hour marathon vlog. Okay, uh, yeah, of course, Miller Man Chris, you you want another, you want longer vlogs. Me, I like to eat dinner, and I like to eat dinner. <laughs> it's cool, Billy. It's cool, Billy. I'll catch you on the replay. I'll catch you on the replay. If you're here, Jeremy V, I hope you got a timestamp for when I went. I went and got all ranty. I want Billy to watch that because it's directed directly at you, Billy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, let's wrap this vlog up. Let's do a couple of these super chats, you guys. But I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me this whole time. That's all you get. Just a little bit of a super chat bumper there. Appreciate you guys being here. You have no idea. You have no idea. Silent Drive uh, news segment is extremely important to a lot of us. You give source links and actual facts. And B-Day is the 23rd. Three years smoke-free Silent Drive. Shit, yeah, buddy. Shit, yeah. You know, and I try to do my best with the news. I've tried to educate myself as much as possible. I've tried to really dig in and get to know people in the advocacy space and the tobacco control space because... This information just needs to be out there, you know. It it just has to. And since not, you know, and I don't, again, I'm not ragging on any other YouTubers. Other YouTubers can run their YouTubes however they want to run their YouTubes. If Zophie wants to stop reviewing vape stuff and she wants to dress up like Harley Quinn and do whatever the hell and review stuff from Amazon, that's go. More power to you. Me, I'm in here. I'm talking about vape stuff and I'm talking about news, and that's what I do. Silent Drive. Tom Sharrow, 
Very gracious of you. Nick is the only YouTuber that says, stop giving me free money. <laughs> Super chats. Yeah. Only one. He wonders why we watch him. How ironic. Well, <laughs> look, here's the thing. I do say that and I do feel weird and I still feel weird that, you know, I still feel weird that I, he, someone bought me a uh, Dixon. I still feel weird about that. I, I'm like, stop it. Why'd you do that? Why did you do that? Completely unnecessary. It doesn't mean I'm not gr completely, completely grateful. Just completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary, Shane. But thank you. I love that Dixon. And I tried to wear it for as long as I could before the rage sweat really started really started pouring down. Thank you, Tom Sharo. Trey, what you up to? Hey, Nick, we have a very similar taste in music. Like, it's scary. And I have completely worn out the four slow burn songs over the years. I know. Dude, there's eight songs. There's eight slow burn songs. From what I understand, right? Slow burn... Uh, Slow Burn did a split, right? Pilot the Dune. I thought Slow Burn did a split EP. Did I thought they recorded more songs. Yeah, he was in Hermano. I thought Slow Burn did a split EP with Unita, but I'm not 100% sure. Unita was another short-lived band too. Yeah, I have worn out these songs uh, as well, Trey, and I'm glad you're into it. I love the fuzzy. Here, here's a, here's one for you. Gonga. You ever checked out Gonga? <laughs> Listen to Gonga or Sasquatch, bro. We have a lot to talk about. Matthew, very gracious of you. Here's something towards your mental sanity. Spreading truth, butter isn't easy. Oh, see, Matthew, you don't. Uh, thank you. That is too. That's too gracious. That is too gracious of you, Matthew. I really appreciate that. You know, I, thank you. God damn it, Matthew. Thank you. I appreciate you. Bump that fist like 15 more times. You you deserve it. Thank you, Matthew. Matthew, I appreciate that. You know, and, and you know, I'm trying my best. I'm just, I'm trying to hold it down one day at a time, stuff like that. And uh, I'm trying not to be all up in my own head. And I'm trying to just stay the course because I believe in what I'm doing and I believe in what we're doing, you know? cultivating this community and bringing people together and raising awareness about vaping. Because if we don't do it, people are just gonna, you know, drop off and just leave. And like, thank God we still got Mike Vapes. Thank God we still got Jay Hayes. Thank God Rip Trippers came back. You know, thank God we got people like Matt and Daniel and Frames and, you know, all these people that are like cultivating this vape community. That's what we need, man. That's what we need. And it's okay to take a break and it's okay to be burnt out and it's okay to just step away for a little bit as long as you always come back with the, you know, with the fierceness, as long as we keep fighting this good fight because we got science on our side, bro. We got science on our side. These will always work and we got science on our side. Appreciate you, Matthew. Uh, now we're actually running way too long. So I appreciate you guys being here. Let me take a quick look and make sure I didn't forget anything. I think we're good. I think we're good. We are all good. So one more time, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I love the vlog and I love that you love the vlog. And I'll see you back here next Thursday. Uh, I think I'm going to have a build stream on Monday. I think I'm going to have a Tuesday, bro, Tuesday on Tuesday with someone who does DIY and if he didn't do DIY, he just might die. So speculate as to who you think I'm going to be talking to <laughs> on Tuesday. I'm going to take a little bit of a break from a lot of the heavy news that's been happening and just chat with a fellow, uh, a fellow vape fam. And he does a lot of DIY. And if he, did, if he ever stopped doing the DIY, he might just die. He might just drop dead. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what would happen exactly. I love you too, Poon Sauce. Great stream yesterday, by the way. Um, but one more time, you guys that make it here to the end of the vlog, even you, can even you, Twisted Messes, I, I just love you. If I ever get the opportunity to meet you in real life, crisp high fives, elbow bumps, someday when COVID's over, I can, you know, I can hand out hugs again. Thank you to everybody that came out to the rally. Thank you for making your voices heard. Thank you for everybody that's out there on Twitter uh, fighting the good fight, out there on Facebook fighting the good fight. 
we will win. Vaping will win. It's just going to be a matter of time. It's just going to be a matter of time. So thank you guys, seriously, so much for watching. Remember that no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is still at least 95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, let's keep on vaping, guys. Be excellent to each other. Peace. Thank you, Living Hints. Let me go.